All right, so when I began working on the book, uh, Un Unbreakable Investor, it was clear the circumstances, right, this is a couple of years ago, but you can see the circumstances were starting to mirror the roaring 1920s. Now, the question was just how similar this setup was and, and just how much of history, of course, it would repeat itself. Moreover, did we want history to repeat itself, right? Remember the crash in 1929, uh, bringing down the curtain on the whole thing. But from a broad strokes, uh, uh, strokes perspective, folks, the setup has actually been very eerie. I mean, take a look at this. So we had the 1920s and the 2020s, World War I, the War on Terror. Uh, we had the Spanish flu, COVID-19, and both of them had a real short recession. Now, 1920 to 21, that recession was sparked by the Federal Reserve because what did they do initially uh, to, uh, to offset uh, inflation? They took aggressive action. <laughs> Sounds kind of familiar. But why do we have inflation? Well, after World War II, all the guys came home. They were looking for jobs. They had to spark the economy. Again, Sounds very familiar. The result, of course, was things like, give an example, a pair of shoes that cost three bucks in 1918, cost $12 in 1920. Now, the Fed, along with the federal government, uh, has ping-ponged the economy around all along. Uh, and, and although the Spanish flu, for instance, it took maybe as much as 100 million lives worldwide. No one knows the exact number. But here in America, it was only 675,000. I don't mean to make light of it, but that's a lot less than 100 million. In fact, we lost more to COVID-19. Now, historians believe uh, that there's sort of a fatalistic reaction to both of those sort of crises, right? And it could be described as, hey, we're alive, let the good times roll. So I want to bring you up some of the comparisons, for instance. Uh, the decadence and the Great Gatsby. Again, we're coming out of these two things, uh, the, the war, the Spanish flu, the war on terror, COVID-19. In the 1920s, there was a survivor's guilt. Uh, people went to movies, right? Movies were phenomenal. Uh, electric appliances cars, radios, all of these things were phenomenal, right? And we took advantage of it. It was wonderful. Now there's this thing like I call it proof of life. I'm alive and I want the world to know it. I'm going to take pictures everywhere. And if I can't afford a private jet, I'm going to get one of those commodes and sit next to it. It's going to look like I'm in a private jet, right? We go to concerts. Uh, Taylor Swift made two billion bucks. Smartphones instead of electric appliances. We travel. You know, in America, we went from 5% of Americans with passports to 48%. That is absolutely, remember the ugly American, like we didn't know anything about any other country, didn't care? Now we're learning. <laughs> and social media instead of the radio, right? Uh, here's the thing. A lot of people kind of worry about things like that, right? Social media and all of these things. It's, 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 there's some legitimacy to that. Uh, uh, it, listen, we know already, for instance, education, it's hurt people's education, kids' education. No one can concentrate. Does anyone remember the home number by heart anymore? But that's just the bottom line, right? Also, both, both periods were periods where there were big ideas, right? Big ideas. We were thinking about doing things we never did before, and we had shared prosperity. Example, I talked about cars a moment ago. 1920, there were 8 million cars in this country. By 1930, there were 23 million cars. That's what you call shared prosperity. Medical breakthroughs. We had penicillin. We had insulin. We had vitamins, right? By the way, here's a good trivia for you. The 1920s enjoyed the greatest increase in life expectancy of any decade ever. Another amazing change happened in the 1920s that was revolutionary, folks. It was young women. They were forced to go to work. They were no longer willing to sit around and wait for a proper suitor to come by their home, right? Uh, because, listen, a lot of young men died in the war. Society needed these women to enter, and boy, did they enter society, and they turned it upside down. In fact, they were known as the flappers, right? They, they had their own clothing their own hairstyle, and overall energetic zest for life. They pushed back against conventional wisdom that was really established by big men in big chairs and big boardrooms telling them how to act. It was a cultural revolution, best expressed, though, by dance in the jazz era.